Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for Alpha Legion. My secret army project is finished uh, and I really wanted to put together a painting tutorial for you. Uh, I researched a number of processes that are out there on the internet. I sort of come up with my own uh, scheme here. I've borrowed elements from different processes out there. They're a tricky army to get it right. I think I've got a pretty good scheme. If you like the look of the models and the way they've turned out, uh, then the idea of this video is to show you exactly how it's done. You can follow along step by step. Just follow me along with whatever Alpha Legion model you're painting. Uh, it's going to be the same process for all the models. So from infantry all the way through to vehicles, uh, it's exactly the same process uh, for uh, this Alpha Legion painting tutorial. So follow along uh, and there's no reason why you can't achieve the same results. I'll guide you through uh, every step. So I'll showcase a few models. Uh, in this video, we'll be showing you the basics. First of all, this model here, uh, then the model We'll be painting and spending the most time will be this one. He's now finished, um, but we'll show you from start to finish how it's done. The basing's not quite finished on him. Uh, once we reach the finishing stage of this model, uh, I'll then show you the basing, uh, which will turn out something like this. You can see it on one of the uh, possessed models, insane sculpts, and that's the finished basing, just there. Uh, the same process will work on larger models, so he's one of the obliterators like so and we'll cover everything in this video so as I said already basing base colors priming shades uh, special effects as well like finishing touches and so on uh, we'll cover how to do the flesh how to do the armor I'll show you how to do the transfers uh, for this uh, Alpha Legion model as well so just the transfer that you can see uh, on the shoulder pads the first thing I'm going to do uh, is go through the materials and then we'll get stuck into the tutorial. So for discount 40k, uh, for painting accessories, uh, for getting a hold of the models, uh, link below for gaming figures. You can check them out. Uh, they're discount 40k. You can tap into free postage with them. Uh, further discounts if your order is larger as well. Uh, and when you use uh, the link, it helps support the channel. So first up is sprays, and this is quite crucial for this technique. You're trying to save time, get good good results, but save time. Uh, as well and so it is vital uh, to get the base coat right and so it's silver uh, the model starts with and then we apply our washes and the techniques on top of that so I would recommend army painter plate mail spray uh, that's a nice bright silver which suits this color scheme well I've actually run out uh, and so the next option you can go for uh, is color forged steel forged silver or Games Workshop do a similar spray. Um, I suppose this is a replica of the GW one. It's a, it's a darker silver, it's a darker tone. In this video, I'll show you how to lighten it, just with a quick technique. Uh, but I would recommend, the, the first one I'd go for would be uh, the plate mount armor from Army Painter. If you can't get a hold of that one, or you already have this one here, or the Games Workshop uh, metallic spray, then just use that, and you can adjust the color if you want to. I'll show you how to do that. In this video so that's your base color that goes straight onto the plastic so build your model spray it uh, with that there's no other undercoats that I use just go straight onto uh, the silver uh, onto the uh, the gray plastic no problem also paint the base trim with that spray just to get some of that onto this uh, that'll link in well when you play your other colors later on uh, then other materials uh, will be Munitor and varnish from games workshop that's the best varnish out there at the moment in my opinion a nice satin finish which is perfect for this metallic result uh, with the Alpha Legion then onto paints there's actually a lot many of them are used for smaller little parts uh, here you can refine this as uh, number of paints if you wish drop some out um, but I'll show you the tutorial of all of these and you can pick and choose if you want to drop some out of the process but I'm using all of these in this video so in no particular order, and I'll link all the materials for you in the video description below so you can check that out. Uh, it's technical Lamian medium, uh, Biotan green, wash, uh, Rakarth flesh, quite vital for the flesh that I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, it's Screamer pink, Contrast Volopus pink, Contrast Magos purple, Contrast Gilliman flesh, don't tell James, Ceramite white, base color, um, layer brass scorpion, agrax earth shade, wash, 
uh, still Legion Drab base colour. Uh, layer Storm Vermin Fur, that's a nice uh, brownie grey for the base trim. And then uh, Galvorback Red base colour. Uh, contrast Black Templar, Contrast Flesh Terrors Red. Uh, for basing, I'll announce it now, it's Technical Astro Granite. If you want to copy the same basing process, which I'll show you in this video, uh, then it's quite crucial to use te Technical Astro Granite. Uh, this is the old Scorpion Green, it's Moot Green, the name could have changed, but it's the Neon Green uh, to match in uh, with the Neon Green colour uh, of the Alpha Legion, as seen uh, on their transfer sheet. That's that colour you're trying to replicate. Uh, Stormhost Silver, uh, or whatever you've, silver you've got that's a bright silver. So in this case, I'm using Stormhost Silver. Uh, crucially, Askelion Green, that's going to give us this metallic turquoise armour. Uh, Iron Breaker, Vishabti Bone, uh, Rhinox Hide, that's dark brown, uh, Flash Gits Yellow, and then again, quite crucial for this painting tutorial, uh, Contrast Griff Charger Grey. So you can see a lot of contrast has been used. That's really going to speed the process up. And I'm using some other colours to pick out smaller details, but most of the model uh, is contrast effects, contrast paints. Uh, being used and the other paints here are for sort of small little areas uh, that we pick out later on further down the process and i'll mention the basing materials as well and so you'll need some pva glue good set of brushes and, and then basing so i've got two types of six millimeter static grass kind of an autumn kind of green and then a dead grass color here as well uh, these are six mill six millimeter grass tough Grass tufts, I use two different shades, two different tones, just to make things look as natural as possible. And the same with the two millimeter uh, grass, static grass here as well. One kind of lighter, strawy green kind of color, and then like a real dead grass as well. You can pick and choose what you want, but I've gone away from regular standard green, uh, especially for chaos space rains. I don't want them, I don't want the grass looking really healthy and green and lush. I want to knock the tones of that down. Uh, and to match in with the grey and the brown that I've got on the basing. So I've knocked it down to these kind of dead grass autumn tones going on. It's the same basing process. If you like the basing on my Tau Empire, which I've rebased and redone, uh, that's, this is the exact same process the two uh, basing types match. Um, and again, it's just to take away that real strong green away from the Tau. Uh, I don't want it to the main focus to be on the orange and the amber kind of colours and with my revamped Tau army. So. Uh, that's the materials that you'll need uh, here for this Alpha Legion painting tutorial. So that's the materials that you'll need, really ready to get stuck in. First stage will be preparation and then the sprays that you're going to use just to prime uh, this model ready for painting. Alright, so first stage, and really it's a key one, and that is the undercoating of your model. I'm trying to show you a process here that's nice and straightforward. It's going to save you plenty of time, still get a nice result. Uh, so, model's been built like so, just the usual process. So, I just built the whole thing and glued together. So, what I'm going to do now is give him an undercoat spray of silver. Uh, so, I usually use, because it's brighter and it works better with this, uh, that's the Army Painter Spray uh, called Plate Mail. Uh, you can get that uh, from them. I have run out, so I'm going to use a different spray uh, here just to show you. you can use different shades of silver. So there's uh, the Color Forge here, Steel Forge Silver, Games Workshop do like uh, a metallic spray as well. Um, now it's a darker shade. Steel Forge Silver, and the same with the Games Workshop one. It's okay, it'll work all right. Uh, but I do like the Army Painter Plate Mail, it's the better one to go for. It's just to give you a brighter silver, and it's going to make the armor and the turquoise pop just that much more. Uh, we can recover that or boost that up a little bit uh, by giving this a coat of paint after it's been sprayed. So I'll show you how to do that as well in this video. Whichever spray you go for, it'll work all right. Uh, if you go for the darker tone, uh, then like Steel Forge Silver or the Games Workshop, uh, silver spray, it's usually a darker tone, so we're going to boost up with a bit of paint, uh, or you can just go straight on with the plate mount. So then it seems to be with the army painter spray, especially that the surface of that spray, once it's gone on, uh, is not the best for painting, putting washes on. So to seal that up and to make sure the, the, uh, the contrast paints go on nicely and smoothly, uh, after it's been sprayed silver, I will then give it a light coat of Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop. 
So we're going to spray silver, then Munitron varnish over the top, and that'll give us that great surface that we can go straight in with contrast paints. I'll do that next. So we now have a model that looks something like this, sprayed up. You see it's darker and the way it's coming out on camera there, it's a darker tone of silver. So it's okay, but I really want that turquoise and the contrast paints to pop on this. So this is optional. Uh, if you agree with me it's a bit too dark, then I'm taking some Stormhost silver. It's a, a brighter, lighter silver from Gay's Workshop. A rough brush. And I'm not looking I'm not looking to fill in the model here, I'm looking just to cover. Um, let's see if I can show you here. I'm just looking to catch most of the model. This is a thin coat. I don't do not want to fill in the details on this. I want a very light coat. I just want to lift the tone of this silver. This won't take you very long, but I think this little correction is worth it. You won't need to go through this process if you've sprayed with a lighter silver, such as plate mount from Army Painter, which I would have used, but I'm just showing you uh, that it's it still can be recovered here just with a little bit of uh, paint being added on. So I'm not, not being extra fussy here just to show you, but general coat like so. I'm not looking to fill in the details, don't need to do that. Just to brighten this model up. Won't take very long at all, uh, just to give that correction, let that dry completely. That model now is completely ready just to start with colours. Uh, contrast paints will get stuck into it, do the main armour and so on, but it needs to dry completely. And then we're ready to go on to the next stage. So that's completely dry. And the reason why I've gone for silver is so much this model is silver. Look at one that I've finished off here. Loads of silver on this model. Look at all the trim, his claws, knee pads, heraldry, detail in the backpack. Loads and loads of silver. So you're giving yourself a massive head start uh, just with that base colour. And then we're just going to apply the other colours on top. So the first colour uh, will be uh, this contrast paint here, this distinctive armour for the Alpha Legion. So the first colour we're going to go for, uh, before we pick out that distinctive turquoise armour, is just a general wash that's going to add a tone to this model here, this kind of alien off-world uh, colour with the metal. Just don't want straight up metal uh, for this model, we want to uh, switch it over uh, to a certain shade. We'll bring in a contrast paint for this one. So I've zoomed in nicely for you so you can see. Uh, model's been painted up with the silver, the extra tone added on top. Uh, and we're ready to go. So, uh, the contrast is Griff Charger Grey, and we're going to apply this just with a, a general brush across the entire model. So, everything uh, I'm going to cover in this, just keeping it nice and easy. And uh, this will tone in the model quite nicely for us. Just link the model just to tie the whole thing in just straight away. And I wonder if you can see that going on. Like so, it's like a thinner contrast paint. Want a nice even coat. I'm not worried about if we splash any onto the base. But I don't want big puddles forming, just want nice even distribution. See if I can put some onto the backpack here just to really show you what it looks like. There's some areas where this may not strictly be needed, such as fleshy areas and so on, but I just, at this stage, I just want to make progress quickly on this model. And it's not going to affect the outcome of any of the colors that we're going to be putting on. So I'm just going to run across the whole thing. You know, you'll slow yourself right down if you start trying to pick out certain areas. So I just quite mindlessly give it a general coat. Main thing I'm looking out for is a good even spread. I don't want any big puddles forming on this, but a good spread. And I'm just going to keep this rolling so you can see the speed. It's going to shade all the chain mail. All the weapons, the helmet, the face, the shoulder pads. And we're nearly done. Do this chain sword and shoulder pad. And we're virtually there. Okay. So I'm going to leave this model at this point. This is model just to show you the first stage. We're actually going to switch to another model, which has already had these stages done, and then we'll carry on the process. But it's going to look something like this. So Griff Charger Grey, it's just giving you 
Uh, just that green tinge, that tone being added to all the armor. And when that dries out, that'll, that'll look great across all the metallic. Especially the main thing this is going to affect is going to be all your trim, shoulder pad trim, any heraldry, details in the backpack. The shade's going to sit on that just nice. So really just creating some nice effect here with simple contrast. That paints, that looks nice and evenly spread across the model. So we'll let that dry completely and we'll move on to the next stage. All right, so we'll go on to the armor next. This is the one that's going to take you a bit of time. Uh, but the good news is that I'm just putting this Eskelion green on, this contrast paint, and then pretty much leaving it. The effect's finished. Uh, you're going to get that subtle metallic sheen coming through it because you already sprayed underneath with silver. So I'm not going to worry too much about building up effects and so on because the, the groundwork's been done for me. That's part of the, the speed of this process. Uh, so Eskelion green contrast paint. And really, just neatly looking to pick out all the turquoisey parts of the armor, just with a single coat should do this. I want to leave uh, the trim and the edges just intact with that metallic work that we've already done. The good thing about putting the Griff Charger Grey shade on is it marks out a lot easier for me, so I can see a lot more clearly where the shading is, where the edges are, and so on to work to. If this was stark silver, it's a bit harder going on the eye to see where exactly where the details are. Mistakes are more obvious, and so on. But once you've got that shade on, it just picks it out nice, you know, uh, it's a much better idea of where to go. So neatly, I'm just going to apply this on. Again, I don't want puddles for me. Just want a nice, even, single coat. See if you can see a bit of the silver glint coming through on that already. And we'll just work our way up here. Nice and tidy. Just use my finger just to wipe that clean. Go along here. Just filling in the armor, really. I'm working my way around like so. So, yeah, that's giving you a pretty good idea. It's looking a bit more blue on camera, it's a, more of a green tone to it here. But this is illustrated nicely for you the way it's done. So we've shaded our armor trim for us, uh, and then the Eskelion green uh, here for the actual Alpha Legion color scheme. I'm just going to neaten that up. So I'm going to work my way around all the armor on this model, just the whole lot, single, even coat, and that'll do it. You've got that nice shimmering metallic sheen coming through. And that's just the effect, just the combination of all this, the spraying that we've done. Griff Charger gray, and then the Eskelion green contrast paint on top. So a bit of work to do, but your effect's pretty much done once you've applied that coat. So I'll press on, do the rest of the model in this color. All right, so model looks something like this. Just rotate them around so you can see. So just going for all the detail. Uh, there with the Eskelion green, and that's really picked out the, arm, the armor nicely for us. Now, uh, we'll lighten that a bit later. The main armor plate's finished, but we'll do some edges as on the armor trim just to lift this model a bit more. Uh, this model is better to show you because I can show you how to do the skin because this gun's got a bold head. I want to show you how to do a bit of bronze as well. There's a plasma pistol, so we'll cover sort of the, the pink uh, colored uh, it's plasma vent area around there, which would be great to show you as well. That sort of classic uh, color for the Alpha Legion as well. So plenty of little bits to show in this video, but I'll unlock some processes for you that you can use on the other miniatures. And, uh, some of the vehicles and so on. Uh, the process I'm showing you here, you can use for all the models of any size, including, including the tanks and so on. Uh, so just follow the same process. Uh, when you're doing larger panelled areas, be careful of the wash flooding and pooling. So just use your brush, run it through, uh, keep the consist consistency nice and even as much as possible uh, on the arm. But it's, you can see it's got a nice sheen, nice glint to it on those turquoise areas. And that's just the contrast with the silver behind. So, in no particular order, I'm going to pick out some base colours on some other areas of the model. Uh, I had mentioned about showing you some of the brassy areas. So I'm just going to pick out a couple of bits. I'm using Brass Scorpion. Uh, and I'm going to go for these round circular vents up the top here. So I'm just going to pick those out with that colour. And really, I would may have just skipped this part. 
but it's just to show you really uh, how to bring that color out. So, because there's a process for that as well. So I'm just going to go around uh, these areas. I'll check over to see if there's anything else. I would keep this to a minimum. Wouldn't do too much because again, the, the more you do, the more work you've got to put into the model. I'm just looking around. There's not really many areas. Uh, here that I can see where I would use this color too much so it's just like the odd area here and there and there'd be more so on vehicles and so on sometimes it's nice when you do a painting in metallic and it's covering a lot of the model whatever faction you're doing it's nice to put in a second metallic just to break things up a little bit I've just gone around this here looks pretty good that's ready to go base color nice and neat Looking around, there's nowhere else really. I'm going to pick that out. Maybe just to balance the model, I'll do. I'll do the star on his chest. I wouldn't usually do this much, but I'll pick out this little star shape on his chest. And again, you've got a base, a base metallic colour, so this paint just goes on one coat straight away. So that's that one done. Next colour, there's some. Uh, it's a pistol holster, some ammunition pouches, see that square one there? Just going to paint that. I'm trying to pick colours that are going to stay in the background, that aren't going to pop too much. I want the main focus to be that turquoise armour. I don't want to distract from that, so I'm just going to use a nice dark uh, base colour. It's Rhinox Hide. And again, just one single coat. Uh, paint this ammo pouch. And I'm also going to paint... Uh, this pistol holster now there's some there's some other strapping which I'll do in another shade but I'm just going to paint the whole thing and then we'll pick it out later that's a nice solid colour I don't want any metallics showing through on this one you can go for two coats this paint's going on uh, very solid here so I don't think I'll need it so just picking out the pistol holster back so anything like that ammunition pouches and so on just pick those out in that darker brown okay so done next color is the flesh I'm using Rakaf flesh I don't want normal healthy looking skin these are chaos space marines so they need to look a bit gaunt a bit unhealthy looking so this Rakaf flesh uh, is it's got some warmth to it but it's quite kind of a sickly kind of color I'm just going to neatly paint this. There's some studs and so on on his forehead. I don't want, I want to leave those metallic. But his eyes, eye sockets, his bold head. Just get that filled in with that colour. Uh, two coats will do no harm if, it's, if the silver is showing for a little bit. So two coats will be, will be fine on him. Don't want to go too thick, but uh, two thin coats will do. So that's that. The next colour is quite distinctive for the Alpha Legion. It's a base colour, it's called Gal Vorbeck Red. It's this colour here. I'm going to use that for loincloths specifically. So you can see it here. It just breaks away from the boring brown. Uh, and checking out the colour schemes I've seen online, this colour is, the, is exactly the right colour to use. So, one or two coats of this. Again, all these colours just go on brilliantly onto this lighter metallic base colour. And then because we've pre-shaded with uh, Griff Charger Grey, I can see exactly where I need to go. If you're painting under very stark silver, any mistakes and so on will just really stand out. Quite stark looking, but all the shading's done for you, so I'm just running into the, the shaded areas. Nice, neat, even coat. And just tuck that right up there. Filling in the whole thing, because we'll shade it later on and looking something like that quite a distinctive color but distinctive but it doesn't pop it doesn't stand out too much because i want the emphasis on the arm next color is still leaved and drab a khaki kind of color that's for picking out straps and webbing and so on that i can see and some of these models come with like a fur kind of look to them and let me show you another model Bring in, I'll show a good example of this, perhaps a terminator. 
So this Terminator model, for example, uh, you can see the area there around his waist. It's this kind of cloth or fur kind of area. I use that on that. The horns you see on his helmet, the base color of this is still Legion Drab. Even these spikes on top of his back, still Legion Drab as well. And, and then things like strapping and webbing that can be done in that color. Again, nice, quiet kind of tone. It won't distract too much from your turquoise color. Don't want these in bright popping colours here. This is Chaos Space Range. This is the, the realm of darkness. So we want these tones knocked down. So I can see strapping across there. Uh, I can see a little bit here, like the grip on his mace. It's like a linen cloth kind of bound handle. It's in there and then just the other side. Uh, some of the strapping on his pistol, which we covered over with the brown, but I'm just going to pick out those areas. Like so. So I'll go around and check the rest of the model uh, for the Steel Legion drab colour. Another area to do, this is optional, I usually do it for space frames, add the, the ribbed joins between the, the elbows and the, the knees, especially visible on the back of the legs so you can see. I usually tone that down. Uh, I've mixed up Iron Breaker and actually mixed it with uh, Contrast Black Templar uh, here for this one. So it's giving me a nice dark watery metallic. And I'll just run that in these gaps. Here. And that'll preserve some of the metallic but it'll just knock it right down. That'll give more emphasis uh, to the turquoise armor. Not draw too much or less attention to these ribbed areas. Just hope add a bit more depth to the model. Hopefully you can see that. That's optional. You don't have to bother doing that if you don't want to. Uh, but I like to do it as a crevice here in the arm and the other arm. And for this particular model, I add a bit of water to this because it's actually quite thick. Uh, his chest, this ribbed area on his chest. So I'm just going to fill that in. So, that's better. I think it looks better. Just roll it around. Nothing else to see there. You can do in the, the hands if they're open. These are closed up with holding the weapons, so there's nothing really to see there. Nothing else really to pick out. So that's that one done. It's optional, uh, but I just like to tone down uh, those areas of that mix. Uh, there's one area I'm not going to be doing, and that's taking regular Black Templar. Uh, and that's for gun panels. There's not really much on this particular model. I'll show you where it can be used. As uh, I used it, just a single coat, but I used it on the Storm Bolter here for this Terminator. Just the casing around here, point it out to you. So this area here. That's not solid black, that's black Templar over the top of the metallic. Uh, I also used it on uh, this Terminator here. So this panel, this area, uh, I used it on that also. So again, just to break up your metallic, so instead of complete silver, we've got some of the bronze going on, some of the black, and then the regular uh, metallic as well, just to break the whole thing up. So let's give you an example of where uh, that can be used. Also, I'll show you one more. Uh, it's on the axe just here as well. I just went into with Black Templar onto these areas uh, here for the axe. So uh, that's optional and there's no need for it here. The mace and the pistol, I don't need to put it on there. Uh, there's some bright little spot colours that we'll do later on. They don't, we don't need them at this stage. And that's this fluorescent uh, pink for the plasma vent. Also the neon green colour, which we'll do later on. We're not, there's no point starting it now. Uh, we'll do that later on, so we'll leave those colours out and add them as effects uh, later on. Alright, so that's the base colours done really. The next colour I want to do uh, is this sickly flesh colour. See the, the head here? Now this is a very small area, uh, but it's going to be the same process uh, for other models that may have more flesh, such as a Mauler Fiend, for example, Obliterators, uh, which I'll show you an example of. But what I've got here is a mix, a 50-50 mix of Magos Purple, Contrast and then Gilliman Flesh, uh, a blasphemous combination here. But that's the two colours, 50/50 mix, not watered down or anything like that at all. Uh, I'm just going to give a coat of that 
uh, onto the fleshy area uh, of this model. So I work my way around on this one. Just gives a nice sort of sickly kind of feel to it. Don't want this to be regular flesh. Now the top of his head, I know that's going to be picked out later on. Back to the original colour, so I'm just going to cheat and just use the tip of my finger just to take away and some of that shading on top. There's no point keeping it on there. It's only really exposed areas where it's obvious. You can just use the finger and thumb technique just to take that away. It's a cheater's way of doing it, it's nice and quick. Okay, so that's shaded in quite nicely and given me that unhealthy... Is that kind of the Emperor's skin in Return of the Jedi? That kind of doesn't look too well. So that's that shading done. Uh, so then what we're going to do next is we're going to tie the whole model together with a shade that's going to go around all these base colours that we've done, a bit of the armour, uh, just to link and tie the whole thing in, shade it all for us, uh, ready for the final highlight stage. I mean, really, looking at this model here, you know, it's all battlefield ready, you could get away with him on the battlefield, no problem. So the colour I'm going to use that to link everything together, it's going to shade nicely for us, uh, and that's so sort of make things a bit more grimy, is Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use that for all the areas I'm looking to shade. So it will shade the bronze areas for us. Just a coat on there. Uh, the Gal Vorbeck uh, loincloth. Just shade the whole thing in. I don't want to do... The areas I want to avoid with this, because I don't want to muddy them, uh, will be the armour. You know, the turquoise armour. The, the, the trim of the armour. I'll leave that. There's no point doing that. Uh, but areas that might be grimy, such as, might do a, a bit more of this uh, mace. That's going to be dirted and grimy, so we'll do a bit of that. Uh, especially the ammunition pouches, the webbing, that grenade. Leave the armour the right way around. Around this side, so we're going to shade and tone this nicely, link it all together as well. Just links all these base colors together uh, into there. The ammunition box pouch, just go around that. Uh, the bronze ball balls here on the end, so do those. Don't want puddling, don't want it to be too thick, but want it to shade this nicely for me. Like so. I uh, don't need to do the flesh, that's already been done unique combination, but I will do the mouthpiece and a bit around there, not too much, but some. Any areas that need to be strengthened, I might do a little bit of this pistol, but not too much, just to make them look a bit more grimy. Um, the grenade, I'll cover that a little bit. It's pretty much looking done. This is uh, good progress we're making. Another area you might want to shade and make a bit stronger is things like chain mail that's dangling down. Let's see if I can find one of these terminators to give you an example. So the terminator here, that chain mail that's dangling down just there, might drop some of this. It's got a, a little bit of brown, a little bit of rust to it, just to make that a little bit more uh, it's darker, deeper, and rusty and grimy. It's not a full-on rust though; it's like a grimy kind of colour. So I would just feed that into there. Just to strengthen that because that'll make the highlight pop a bit more later on. Uh, there's another colour I'm not going to cover in this video, and that is the skulls that you can see. So the skulls that dang in there, the ones on the end of the spikes. The base colour uh, for that when you come when you do your base colours uh, is a shabti bone. Uh, one or two coats. And then just leave it and then shade it right now at this stage uh, with the Agrax Earth shade. Then later on, I'll just guide you through the whole thing now. Later on, you're going to highlight it with a shabti bone, uh, just tidying the whole thing up, uh, and then a final highlight of a shabti bone mixed with some white, about 50-50, just to pick out like the jawline, uh, the eyebrow line, the edge of the eyes, very tops of the skull, and that give you a nice highlighted skull effect. So that's the process used for those. You can follow that through, uh, no problem. Whilst we're on uh, the Agrax Surf Shade, we might as well do the gory effect on the end of any weapons. This is optional. Oh, it's good fun to do, it looks cool. It can look too corny. Pardon the, the pun here, the reference to Chaos 
uh, Space Marine Legion, but you can look a bit too corny if it's straight up glistening red. It's up to you, you can do that if you want. Uh, but I want it to look more like dried blood, you know, he's a, a veteran of the long war. Uh, and so what I do, uh, we'll do the end of this mace. So I'm going to blob in some Agrax Surf Shade. Like so. Then take some Flesh Tear as red. And then blob that in. And just work it into that. Just to give me that blooded look, but not too over the top. So he's looking something like that. It's maybe a bit too much. So I'm going to take some stuff out of the brush here and then apply it if it's too strong. I've actually cleaned the brush and it's damp. I'm going to dab it back in there and lift some of this. You may want to go over the top with blood, but I want to be semi sensible with this. There we go, I'm going to lift a little bit of it. So it's not totally over the top. Yeah, looking something like that. So it's subtle, but it looks like, yeah, he's been um, taking down some targets with that weapon. The blood sort of dried up. That's that effect. That's that done. I'll leave it and that's that All right, finished. I'll show you a few other examples of that. I've done the same with this mace. Deep, dark, blooded kind of look. Also done it here with this chain axe. It's a very easy technique to do. Agarac Surf Shade and then some Flash Terrors Red mixed in as much or as little as you want. Like so. So this is mostly dry. But whilst we wait, I'm going to press on. I'm going to go back to Stormhost Silver. And I'm going to use this to catch the edges of this armor here, just to glint it up. So things like the edge of the shoulder pad. Just using the edge of my brush. See if it comes out on camera, but I'm just looking to catch the edges just to lighten it. You can maybe see the glint of it there. And this symbol as well, I'm just going to drag the brush across. You can also use this to correct any mistakes made. Now uh, we've got the Escalion Green perhaps onto the armor panel. Now's the time to correct it. Go around the trim a little bit. Edges. Um, so like the backpack, I'm just going to catch the edge of this. Catch the edge of these vents. And I'll use it on things like uh, the teeth on chainsaws, pick those out. Just trying to make things glint a little bit. So at the top of his knee pad. Got a bit onto the loincloth, but doesn't matter. And I'm going to pick out some of these armor trim areas. That's going to pop nicely with that color. Yeah, you can see the glint of it there on the, the knee pad. Now the mace you could catch, maybe the tips, the spikes, and so on. And it's, it will just lift it and add a bit of uh, glint to it, just to make it pop that bit more. This skull on his chest, this ribbed area, I just want to catch a bit of it. I don't want to pick out every single panel. Uh, his breather mask, I'm just going to run the brush parallel with it, just try and catch the top of it. Like so. So it looks something like that. Just want these details to pop here, and that's easily done just with the Stormhost seal. So we go around the rest of the model, because it doesn't take too long. Uh, it's worth doing, just lifts the whole model. So, model's coming along really well. I've now taken the Stormhost Silver and kind of a 50-50 mix roughly uh, with the brass scorpion. And we're just going to highlight and pick out uh, the brass areas. So again, just looking to glint, glint the armour up. I'm not going for a total repaint on this, I'm just looking to glint across it. Uh, the same on the, the ball balls here. Just catch them with this. And just catch them here. And just everything starts to pop now, which I think is very important. 
You don't want dull looking miniatures on the board. And so this stage is so important, it just lifts everything. There, those are popping just nice now. That's easily done. Everything I've showed you really has been quite straightforward. So we've got ourselves a model now that's looking pretty good. Uh, there's still a few more things to pick out, uh, but we are mostly there now, so we're making some real good progress. And there's still some spot colors around. We've got the pink to come, and this neon green as well for further uh, effect. Uh, the Rhinox hide uh, ammunition pouches and case, they look fine as they are, so I'm not going to bother doing anything else to those. Uh, it's, they're just so insignificant now. And I'm now mixing uh, still Legion Drab with some white, and I'm just looking to pick out this uh, khaki color here. There's not much to do in this case, there'll be more to do on other models. Just looking to pick that out a little bit. Just to tidy it up and pick out the edge. So, very insignificant areas on this model. I'm going to do a couple of little bits here, and that's pretty much all there is to do in this particular situation. And uh, when you have more to do, such as uh, here, then I would highlight with two tones on this one. So uh, dragging the brush across this, first of all, we've still leaving drab mixed with a little bit of white, uh, and then a final highlight with more white added to it, just to really pick it out. Uh, and the same here with these tusks. So uh, still leaving drab with a bit of white uh, towards the, the tip end, across here, about two thirds of the way up. And running the brush in this direction, so painting like so this way, and then mixing with white to catch the, the total tips here at the end, the very tips of these tusks with more white being added in, you get effects like that. Quite straightforward, still looks very cool, but just guiding you through that process and for the extra work of the Steel Legion Drab. Right next, you really could leave it the flesh. The Rakar Flesh, but I can't resist here, so I'm mixing a bit of Rakar Flesh uh, with some white. I've watered it down a fair bit. I want to catch the top of his head. His bald head, was made a mistake there, so I'll quickly take a damp brush. Remove that. Okay, so now it looks something like that, just that flesh on top of the head looking stronger. And then with the very, very tip of the brush, very carefully, I want to pick out his, uh, the ridge line's eyebrows here, just to strengthen the eye socket. That's gone all right. And then the other side, like so, just strengthen that. If you can see that on camera. There's no way I want him to have healthy looking skin. This is a Chaos Space Brain, she's got to have that uh, sort of sickly uh, it's emperor kind of flesh. So that's that done. Obviously more to do. I did say I'd show you actually, so I'm gonna show you uh, one of the obliterators. Uh, so you can see more of that flesh uh, being done. But it's, a, it's a smaller scale here, but it's exactly the same process. So some more examples of the flesh. Here's an obliterator here. You can see a lot more of it there on his back. But that's the same colors, same process, same shading. Very sickly, like putrid kind of look. To it and that's the effect that you want. Also works really well. As this is one of the possessed models. You can see the great effects that you can get with contrast paints. See on this spiky claw thing here. And then once that dried, I then started to water in it and add add some black templar to it just to do the tips of these again contrast paint. Picking out those areas. But uh, the more you practice, the better you'll get, but you can get these kind of results here. It's just contrast paints are great. But that flesh is a real nice feature again, but it's toned down. It doesn't, I don't think it detracts too much from the turquoise armor. It's another one of these uh, tones that's uh, not gonna detract from that. But that's showing you how that process works in other models. All right, so next stage uh, is this Galvorbeck red, this loincloth that he has. I'm gonna take that original color and just tidy up the original. So I'm going to go over it again uh, and just bring out that red. Like so. And then now 
there's some on the other side. Then I'm going to take that colour, mix it with some white. So I'm going to do this in two stages. So I'm just going to do a slightly lighter version. First of all, the galvo back red. And this I'll use for the edges. I'm going to water this down a little bit. Watered down paint flows is a lot more precise. So I'm just trying to get a nice tip on this. And I'm just going to edge highlight the clock. Not absolutely every edge. But sort of the key ones, the most noticeable ones. So this piece here. I go around the holes, they're quite good to pick out. And the edge of the cloth running up here. Down here. And that's about it. I'm tempted to run a stripe down there. Like so, if you can see that. Uh, and then to finish off, I'll do an extreme highlight. And that's just to catch um, like extreme creases and corners. It's like this crease here, this corner. A little bit down here as well. It looks something like that. So not too over the top. Just want to catch and highlight that. Add, but again, it's just quite suppressed compared to the glinting eye of the model. But most of the highlights and bits have been done now, so we're going to go on to some of the extra special effects. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else. Not really. Okay, so the model's looking uh, pretty good. All right, so this plasma vent, cl classic. Uh, it's Alpha Legion. It appears to be uh, this fluorescent pink kind of colour. So actually, working in reverse order, you're starting with the highlight first uh, in sort of a quicker a quick way of doing this, uh, you'll, you'll see how it works out. So I'm using Screamer Killer, uh, Screamer Pink, sorry, uh, mixed with uh, white to give me uh, a very light pink. And I'm just going to paint. I don't want it too thick. It's quite a thin down coat. And I'm just going to paint that plasma vent with that color. And just pretty much fill that in. But I want it to be a thin uh, coat. So looking something like that. Now you could leave it like that. Uh, but we'll come back to that later on. And it's just a nice light coat on that. It's basically filling in that plasma with that colour. It is quite light. I've mixed a fair bit of white. I'd say about two thirds white on this one. Perhaps a little bit more. Add and then some screamer pink mixed in. That gives you that very light pink. Like so. And that's that. We'll let that dry completely. We'll come back to that later. So the next colour is... And we'll come back to that pink in a moment. Uh, I've got Scorpion Green. It's the old Scorpion Green. It's Moot Green now. It's that nice neon fluorescent green. Uh, so I'm looking to pick out... You have to check your colour references and, and artwork here, but it's things like these eyeballs buried in the armour. You can see that on his knee. There's one on his shoulder pad here. So this is just normal base paint here. I'm just looking to fill that in that solid neon green colour. Like so, if you can see it on his shoulder pad. Iconic, classic colour for the Alpha Legion. Just looking around to see if there's anywhere else for this one. Seems to be eye eyelets and uh, eyeballs, eyelets and so on. Not on the face, but on the actual armour itself. It's kind of unnatural, possessed kind of armour. And just those two that I can see. That's pretty much it. Um, other instances of it of it will be, for example, uh, I haven't painted them yet, but the eyes on the Terminators, I'll pick out in that colour as well. For the regular Marines as well, pick out in that colour. So that's where it's used. It's used sparingly and just in small places, uh, but it really pops out. It's a great colour. And, and obviously, it's the colour of 
the Alpha Legion logo as well. It's the same color. You see the transfer there on the shoulder. That's the color you're going for. But once that's dry, I then shade it and a little bit of the area around it as well, just to sort of catch a bit of a glow. I'm using a washer. It's BR10 green. That will shade that nicely for me. And I sort of let it overflow a little bit onto the arm around it. Uh, it's just a little bit. So I'll just shade it here on his knee pad. Like so, and that just shades that nicely. Uh, and again, this is this is optional. I actually highlight that, just the top of it, the tip of it. Add uh, with, you'll see it there. Just really making that pop. Uh, that's your uh, mooked green, mix a little bit of Flash gets yellow, a bit of white, just to make a lighter version of that. And I'm just looking just to catch a highlight uh, on that eyeball. One on the knee. And one on the shoulder. So you can see it just there. It's worth making that pop. It's an iconic color. Uh, and it'll complement the transfer nicely. I'll show you how to do transfers in this video as well. We'll apply the decal later on. All right, next, I'm just experimenting with this pink. Uh, so I've taken uh, Lamian Medium, Technical Medium, it's the clear stuff, just watering down your contrast paints. Uh, and then I've got Velopus Pink uh, here, contrast paint. Mix those two together, I think Velopus Pink as it is comes out too strong. Uh, and that, the idea of this is it will shade the cracks and then leave the highlights already highlighted for you because you start with a lighter colour. So it's looking something like that. which is flooded a bit here, so I'm just going to take away some of this. So subtly, it has picked out that ribbed effect. Not too bad. I'm getting the impression that I would start with an even lighter pink underneath. And that will pop quite nicely. I'm going to leave that happy enough as it, as it stands, like so. I'm not going to redo it because it's very fine. That ribbing is very, very fine on this plasma pistol. Uh, but experiment with that. Again, the more you do it, the better you'll get. Uh, but I'll go for a very light white pink base underneath. And then I would use a bit of medium and uh, a bit of Velopus pink uh, for your shade. It's the idea of that one. So looking something like that. But I'd say that's done. Happy enough with that. So we've got some nice uh, colors that pop nicely here. Uh, the pink and then also uh, this neon green. I think this model, I think is finished. Yeah, so the next stage is then, uh, is transfers. I've got one transfer, I'll show you how I, I do mine. Uh, and then we'll cover basing in this video as well. So for transfers, I'm gonna take this transfer here. I'm gonna use a modern knife just to cut it out. Like so, and then and I'm just going to dip that in water. I'm ready. I can just sit there for a little while. Uh, I'm going to take some PVA glue. Now the idea of PVA glue is it helped the transfer stick, but it also helped stop the ghosting effect that you can get from underneath the transfer. It looks quite ghosty and white. Uh, the PVA glue will create a bond, but also stop that ghosting from happening. So you get a nice clean kind of finish. Uh, now this is a rounded shoulder pad. so. Uh, it's tricky enough. This transfer is quite small though, um, but there's a little trick I'll show you with transfers. So this should be loosening up for us. I'm going to take a rougher, older brush for this one and a bit of water. And it's going to be like a watery PVA mix on the shoulder pad. So it's going to go on like so. You should see that on there. Lose the excess. Try and disturb this transfer, see if it's moving. I'll come back to it in a second, I'm patient with this. All right, so this transfer is on the move. I don't want to tear it, so it's nice and loose now. I'm getting the brush underneath, and I have the transfer on the end of my bristles. I'm just dropping the brush onto the tissue here just to lose the excess water, and then I'm gonna uh, drop the transfer onto the shoulder pad like so. So I'm using the transfer sheet as a reference. Just want to get this transfer at the right angle and in the right position. 
So very carefully, I'm just going to use the tip of my knife to float this over. You can use a brush. I found you can get great control if you're very gentle with the tip of a knife. I want it in position where I want it to go. So there's good enough. So you've got two options. Uh, you can use Microsol, Microcell, I think it's called. It's two different pots. It softens up the transfer and helps it wrap around uh, rounded or uneven surfaces. You can get a hold of those. They last you forever. You won't use them very much. Uh, and uh, those pots I've, I bought years and years ago and I still have them. So you can go for that option. Or you can go for the option where you carefully uh, split the transfer. So I'm looking at this transfer and I can see uh, that it's it's bending here, it's creased here. So I'm gonna put in a few cuts on this just by rolling the blade very carefully. Like so. I'm gonna take a damp brush and I'm just gonna sort of gently push out the excess water and PVA so that it's looking flat. And as I'm pushing that excess water and PVA out, I'm just looking to see if there's any creases that I need to get rid of. But it looks like the splits have done their job. And this is a, a trickier way of doing it, but if you can get away with it, which I have here, that's gone just nice. It's rounded itself around the shape of that shoulder pad. I just cut through the main creases on it. And then when that dries, that shouldn't ghost. It's got a bit of PV on there to help it bond, to stop that ghosting from happening. So that's gone quite straightforward. So you will lose a few, you'll crack a few, they'll break apart and so on. Uh, but that's the same way if you're doing transfers, you're never guaranteed that they'll 100% work every time. There'll be mistakes and breakages and so on. But that technique's quite quick. If you're using the chemicals, you're applying it, you're waiting, you're wondering if it's going to, you know, have to leave it for a good while to see if it stretches all the way around. It does work, though, it is good. So there's two options for you. You can go for the split transfer technique, which I've just showed you just there, or you can use the Microsol, Microsol, which works uh, brilliantly as well. So there's a number of options for effectively uh, applying transfers. And also using those chemicals, the Microsol, Microsol, they come as a set, two pots. Um, that will stop the ghosting as well. I've found that when I use that, you don't get the ghosting effect either. So uh, either way works, whichever one you want to do. All right, so we're going to go on to the basing. This model's finished. So as I'm going away from my usual process, which is PVA glue and some sand and stones, and then work on the base. And usually that's done at the start of my painting tutorials. This time I'm using technical uh, Astro Granite. So it's like a, a textured paint that you can apply uh, at the end of the process here, because I'm not spraying and affecting what I've painted. I'm just applying this carefully around the base. I, I have given the, a coat of this uh, Dawnstone grey, it could be any grey you want. Uh, I've used Dawnstone or you can use uh, the grey that we'll finish with which is Storm Vermin Fur and you can use that. Give that a coat first of all just to seal that rim of the base up nicely. Uh, when you're spraying the morning you're getting silver uh, on this. It's no harm, it's actually good you get silver onto the base as well because a spray going onto plastic gives you a nice strong base where your paints will go on better and they'll stay on better. If you paint onto raw black plastic much more likely to rub off and chip. So when you're spraying the model, it's actually a good thing that you're spraying some of the silver onto the base, some of the matte varnish is going onto the base as well. I actually advise that you do that. Uh, so painting the trim, that just leaves us ready to put on the as technical Astro Granite. So I've got an old brush. I don't mind if the bristles, 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 bristles get wrecked. <laughs> so I'm trying to hook out some of this Astro Granite. So you really need an old brush for this one. And I'm just going to apply it onto the base, use the bristles to push it neatly in against the feet. And I want it to go on lumpy because this is the sandy effect. Yeah. I'm just painting it on, but it's, you know, it's real textured stuff. Big fan of it. And I thought, well, I'm not going to bother using this because I'm just going to get through one pot after the next. But I've done, you know, a couple, if you're sensible, a couple of pots will do an army. So it's actually not too bad. You know, and your colour's there for you, your texture's in there. And you can paint it on, which means you can do your paint job and then do the basing afterwards. This is all going on quite well. There's ra more raised areas, piles of this stuff. And I'm just going neat as I can around the feet. something like 
for that. So that's quite nicely textured. I'm actually going to enhance that. Now, this is optional, uh, but I add in a little bit of sand and stones. Just a bit extra. A little bit, a little sprinkling of it because it's well textured enough. But just for my sands and stones box. And then using my thumb, I'll just run around the rim to tidy it up. Taking away the excess where it's overflowed and so on. That'll give you a nice neat finish. Any stones that may need a bit of help, you can just press them down into the mix. But this, there's one there at the edge that might come off, so I'm going to just press that in. And that's a nice finish. Like so. And again, the advantage is I'm not having to spray and cover up the feet and so on. I'm just going straight on with this texture paint, uh, which is a, a good move. Um, so Astro, technical Astro Granite uh, here for this colour scheme. So I need to let that dry. What I'm going to do, just to keep this rolling, uh, is I'm going to go onto one of my terminators uh, using the same basing technique. I'll just press on with that and finish the basing on one of the terminators. Okay, so we have ourselves a terminator. Um, so the first step is actually to take Agrax Earth Shade. Now, if you look at this model, uh, the one that's drying, it's quite light, the basing. A bit too light here. Uh, I want to knock it down. So we'll do that with a wash. Agrax Earth Shade, about 50-50 with water. Uh, and then just with a rough brush, once that mix is made up, just apply it evenly across the basing. And as you can see, that's toned that down. I'll bring up the two so that you can compare them. One's lighter, one's darker. And that was shade nicely for us. Uh, tie the whole thing in uh, and just want that knock down the tone, which that has successfully done. So your first step is watered down Agrax Surf Shade. That's obviously going to take a while to dry. This is dried already. So the next stage then is your highlighting. So the first up is going to be Storm Vermin Fur mixed with some white, about 50-50. Get some white here on a separate brush. Mix these two together. And then just gonna highlight the base. I'll be repainting the rim later on. So unlike other techniques, it's not a big deal if I do get any of this onto the trim. And that's just highlighting the base. Maybe a, a bit more white to add to this. Just being careful as I go around. This is highlighting up quite nicely for me. So he's looking something like that. for more of an extreme by adding a bit more white to this highlight that's better just want to catch that a little bit stronger okay so highlighting like so uh, I then want to take a different brush a brush different brush and some still legion drab want to introduce and I just scrub it out on my palette across here and then scrub this in in patches uh, on the basing. Just random patches. I want to break up the grey. So I'm moving away from my standard sort of grey basing. It's a bit standard, a bit boring. I want to create something that's a bit grimier looking. So some patches there on the base. Easily done. Same process to then dust up the base of this model on his legs and feet so like he's been walking through this dusty landscape so wherever his feet are I'm just going to use this mix I'll zoom in here in a second so you can see but really I'm just dusting up his his feet and the bottom of his shin guards as well so it looks something something like that that's still legion drab very very easy to do and it just adds a layer of realism. He's been walking through this forsaken landscape. So the base is now looking something like that. It's ready for flocking next. Let's we'll some flock. Right, so materials then. 
and um, I have gone for if I actually show you a finished model we'll show you what we're aiming for so that's the finished basing on this obliterator I've gone away from standard green it's a bit predictable um, I don't want a, a, a healthy looking grass for my Chaos Space Reinforce. I want more of a parched uh, kind of look. I don't want really healthy neon grass sticking out. It's gonna, I think it's going to detract away from these. I don't want a healthy looking landscape. So I've gone for more uh, dead grass kind of tones. Not completely. Uh, there's so many tones and shades of grass out there, both as tufts and sort of static grass packs that you can get. Um, for extra realism, I like to mix up the tones. So we'll show you here. Uh, what we're using so I have uh, some and these are looking a good color on camera this is pretty much uh, what you're seeing is what I've got here so uh, these are I, I think it's like an autumn shade so there is some greens in that there's some browns mixed in so it's that kind of uh, shade there that's a slightly healthy looking grass uh, and this one is from uh, WW Scenics uh, it's six millimeter so the grass tufts are six millimeters in size uh, this one's called wild meadow uh, but this is this nice uh, sort of dead brown kind of look and I've been using this technique for this Alpha Legion army also my revamped Tau army as well uh, this is the same basing process um, so I've got two tones of tuft like so not spring or summer look, but a nice autumn dead grass kind of feel. Uh, and then for the same as well with my static grass, my, I think it's two millimeter static grass. Um, this shade, which is a real sort of dried out some kind of green in this one. And then also a real dead grass brown as well. It's already gone for autumn winter dead grass um, colors here and you can pick whichever shades you want to go for uh, but that's the kind of effects uh, or the uh, color tones that I've gone for with this so first thing is you plant tufts so this is good fun just PVA glue these tufts are self-adhesive but I just like to read tie them into the landscape by just dipping them into my PVA and planting them. So I'm going to put one right by his foot and plant it just in there. I'm going to go for one of these brown tufts as well. You can use these quite sparingly. It's quite a big tuft this one. So it's made of flexible glue so I'm just going to break it in half. And again it's very sticky but I still want to plant it with PVA. And I'm just going to put it next to this one. So the two tones next to each other and that'll do I don't want to overcrowd this base um, and it means you know if you're sensible if you're using you know like half a dozen of these tufts or 10 or so on your larger vehicle bases and so on like a Lord Discordant for example and then just here and there tufts being used on regular infantry it's only going to be a few packs and you'll be able to do an entire army so those two have gone on, pressed in quite nicely, and then the glue, uh, they'll be stronger on the other glue as well. Then taking again a very rough brush, which I don't mind losing the bristles on. And I'm gonna use that uh, for some uh, regular uh, two millimeter static brush. So, rough brush. Right, I like to plant around, put some patches in around the tufts. Just tie them all in. So there's a patch just there. Do a patch just there. Very random patch here. As much or as little as you want. And I do one more patch, like so. Very random looking. Uh, then I'm going to take uh, either shade, doesn't matter. I'm going to put them onto this patch. And we'll go for this back patch here as well. Give it a tap just to really try and get these uh, static grass to settle and tap off the excess and then with the other color I'll just go over the rest of the base this one just tapping it to get these to settle in press them down a little bit tapping them just to plant them tap off the excess 
blow off the excess, run my thumb again around the rim just to tidy up, like so, and that's that basing done. Again, the green's not too strong, it's not taking away from the model. Uh, we have the Steel Legion drab patches on the base, also uh, the dusty effect on the legs as well, so it's really just blending the whole thing in. Very happy with this basing process. Really like the way it's come out. It's worked out well for the towel. Took that green away from my towel color scheme and brought it down to these nicer autumn uh, kind of shades. It works well for the Chaos Space Marines also. But that's that full process. All that's left, once that's dry, in fact, because I've run around with the rim, I can just paint this rim color straight away. Uh, which the color I've chosen is trying to complement the basing scheme that we've gone for, uh, which is the Storm Vermin Fur. It's I had a lovely grey, but it's got like some brown tones running through it as well, and it just matches up perfect uh, with the basing process that we've done. It's a nice large brush, and this is you know where you're on the stage right now, where you're finishing the model entirely. And because the trim's already been painted, uh, sprayed silver, painted grey, and so on, I think one coat should do this no problem, if not two coats. But I'm just running around the model. With this trim color. Nice long brush strokes. Make it look as even as possible. And then we have the basing done. Like so. Well here, basing finished. So basing finished, it will come out looking like this. Which I'm very happy with. I think it matches in nicely with the rest of the model. So that's one of the possessed finish just there. Uh, that's the model we worked on earlier. So I'm just going to wait for this to dry and then it'll be the same process. So Agrax Surfshade Wash, uh, then highlighting, and then planting your tufts and adding your static grass, then finally painting the trim. Once that's done, the model's finished, transfers are all done. To finish this model entirely and to seal it up, which I think is quite important, uh, this is a metallic armor. I found that I really would recommend this Munitorum uh, varnish from Games Workshop. It gives that nice, just about satin kind of finish, which is great for this kind of armor. You'll keep your glint. Uh, with your arm, it won't knock it down and tone it right down. The last thing you want to do is put on a solid mat, which will kill off uh, all your metallic tones. So, uh, Munitron Varnish have found to be the best one out there, and that'll preserve nicely uh, the glint that you have on the armor uh, with this Alpha Legion model. So, that's the painting tutorial. I hope that's been a help to you. As I said, this process you can use for all the models. I've used the same process, hasn't changed uh, for all the models across the range I've painted uh, for my 2000 points force. Uh, follow this along step by step. There's no reason why you can't achieve the same uh, results for your own Alpha Legion army. Keep a lookout for more painting tutorials on the channel. Uh, for discount 40k, it's gaming figures. Uh, check them out uh, for discount 40k across the UK, the ship too, and the European Union as well. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.